um, the words of encouragement that he gives to me are words of encouragement for you also. Yes? Yes. He said, good morning. Good morning. We have entered a new year, 2024. The common greeting around this year is happy new year, not happy, same oh same. A lot of people are not all thrilled about this year. The month of January can be both challenging and hopeful. Challenging because all of the fun and celebration of December is now gone. For some, the weather isn't pleasant. Or some of the problems of 2023 are still with us in this first month of 2024. January has been classified as the most difficult month of the year for those who battle with depression or an emotional tendency that afflicts and affects the mind. The medical community has called it SAD, SAD, Seasonable, Seasonal Affective Disorder. January is the peak month of the year for this challenge. Post-holiday letdowns turn into failed New Year's resolutions, which are enhanced by short days, long nights, bad weather, and holiday credit card bills. Yeah. Regardless... We, as believers, and also those who lead ministries, we land, we land on the side of faith, hope, and love. We have all been called out. We have all been called together. We have all been called forward. We've been called to go forward together. My prayer for all of us is that ministries and lead ministries is that our people can and will find ways to help each other to go forward. The only place where Jesus told his disciples to follow his example was in John 13 in the washing of the feet. Through practical and supernatural serving, serving, service, this will take place. Service connects us. Service amplifies gratitude. Service increases compassion. Service builds self-esteem. Service is always the answer. It fixes a bad day. It tempers the burdens that we bear. Service helps other people, and it helps us. We don't expect anything in return, but receive joy. When you serve, you have no time to complain, no time to criticize. When you serve, you don't have time to focus on fear. When you serve, you don't have time to focus on lack. You focus on gratitude and material attachments or desires diminish. Service is a direct path to a meaningful life. Try this. This year, serve the pain that you know best. This year, serve the pain that you know best. Think of the three most painful times in your life. Maybe you were depressed. You needed support. Maybe you wanted to go to college, but you couldn't afford it. Find a charity or organization, a cause for each area of your historical pain and serve. Volunteer to help those in a crisis. Sponsor someone in some way in a scholarship or whatever. Above all, let us serve. My prayer for you and the ministries you lead will become serving communities wherever you may be. That as salt and light, when we find a hurt, we heal it. We find a need, we fill it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And to the best of our capacity, <clears throat> show it in serving you. God will be with you in a big way in 2024. So all year long, Let's keep going forward, forward, forward. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Word from the Lord, forward. What's the matter? You, you don't drop your phone? You should turn it off. Amen. You know, I sought the Lord, and, and uh, the only word I got from him is, y'all got to get out of your box. Get out of your box. 
Get out of your box. Psalm 78, 41, Lord God, as we share your word this morning, whoo, may we feel it, Lord. May it touch our inner soul, Lord God. Lift up our spirit, Father. Be exciting as we hear your words to us this morning. Father, we give you this morning in Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Psalm 78, 41, when speaking of Israel, said, yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One. Again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Back in 73, back in 73, Clint Eastwood, everybody knows him, in one of his Dirty Harry movies, Magnum Force, he said, man's got to know his limitations. He said, a man's got to know his limitations. A man needs to know his limitations. If he has them or if he doesn't have them, he needs to know what limits him. Anybody remember that? See, in, in businesses and employment, you know, we've worked somewhere for some place for someone. There's levels of advancement, right? There's levels of advancement, a ladder that, that takes you up. But it often takes you up to a place where it dead ends. And if you're going to go any further, you've got to make a lateral move and jump on the next ladder. And often what happens is, is people will reach the top of, of their achievement, the top of, of their, their ladder, not want to move laterally and find out that they have been let go. They have retired. They have moved on. Why? To make room for another younger man a little further down the ladder who's working his way up, who's going to do the same thing you did for less money. I'm just, yeah. yeah. You've reached the top. You've reached the top. You've reached your limitation. I, for one, do not enjoy limitations. I don't like them, never did, never will. I do not like limitations. How about you? Nonetheless, they exist in my life. They're here. The question becomes, and I submit this question to you all this morning. The question, the question is, how many of those limitations have been self-imposed? How many limitations do we put on ourselves? And for what reason do we put them? How many times have I limited my life by my own life choices? That I've made a choice in life that prevents me from moving laterally and continuing on. It keeps me, keeps me on, on my ladder. In reality, most of those limitations, when honestly challenged, honestly challenged, are mine. I'm the one who limits me. I'm the one. That's the, that's the kingdom of man. But in the kingdom of God are there limitations? Well, one of you. Are there limitations in the kingdom of God? Of course not. Of course not. There's no limitations. Why then do we find ourselves limited in that kingdom that has no limitations? Why do I find myself sometimes limited in the kingdom of God that I know has no limitations? It's a personal choice. It's a choice you make when you, when you don't read and study the Word of God. It's a choice you make when you don't stop and pray and help someone. It's a choice you make when you avert your eyes from the will of God and the job that he has for you. Oh, wow. Pastor, you're getting serious again. Yes, I am. Those limitations are of our own making. Do you have God in a box this morning? Is God limited in your life this morning? There's some things God, it just kind of 
beyond God. Well, all we can do is pray. That's going to God. Do we have God in a box this morning? You might want to give that some thought before you answer because I dare say that though our boxes may be different sizes and different shapes, we all got boxes, people. We've all got limitations on what we believe and have faith in and trust in God can do. God can do. We're limited. Limitations on God. Yes. Hi, God. Good of you to show up. Out of your box to work for me. Out of your box to do good for me. Get back in there. Are we limiting God this morning? See, this is this is a question. See, again, so often we have certain things that, that we believe will turn the crank and, and get God to show up. Huh? Things things that we do. Lord, if only you'll if only you'll do this for me, I'll do that for you. God says, good luck with that. Not going to happen. We're back in your box, God. Back in your box. Sorry. Wrong answer. Back in your box. You know things that turn the crank, and Father's going to show up in a, in a limited way for a limited purpose in our lives. To our limitations. Then he conveniently is, is put back in the box until called again. God, like I said, if you'll do that for me, then I'll do that for you. Well, that thank you for showing up. We call on God like, like I've got him right where I want him. Jack in the box. You know, I wrote a song a long time ago called Climb Down Your Big Wagon. And, and in it, I talk about putting God in a box. Putting limitations on him. Wish I could remember that verse. We take it oh so serious when we talk about the Lord. We try to make him into something he ain't never been before. We build a box around him, then lay him down inside and holler, got you, Jesus. There ain't no place to run. You can't get out of where I've put you. And we become comfortable allowing God to work in, in, in certain ways in our lives, but not in other ways. And I'm telling you what, this morning, better blow that box apart. Ephesians 3.20 says, God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dream. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working with us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. How many times have you found in your life God doing something that you did not give him permission to do? I did not call you to do that. How many times do we find that take place in our life? How many times do we find ourselves astonished by God not being in his box? Get back in there. You're pushing the parameters of my mind. I don't have a file for you when you do this kind of stuff, God. Get back in there. <clears throat> God's calling us to get out of our boxes. At the very least, let him out. At the very least, turn him loose. I'm not naive enough to think today that this sermon is going to change a bunch of boxes, but I'm going to give it anyway. I'm believing that by the time we're done, there's some boxes that we will know and realize must be expanded, at least expanded. God, the master of the universe, creator of all 
all that is, all that we are limited. He allows us, amen? He, remember, he allows us to limit him. God allows you and me to limit him. To limit his showing up. You ever think about that? Think about that. So many ways in our own lives. How is that? We limit God when we don't see, we limit God when we don't see ourselves, who I am, when we don't see ourselves through his eyes. When we see ourselves through our own mind's eye, or we see ourselves through through the eyes of our mother or our father who said, you're, you're not good enough, you'll never be good enough, you're dumb as a post, good luck with your life. Or son, daughter, you can grow and be anything you want. What has been the input in our lives that has, that has boxed in and, and put us in a corner, unable to open ourselves to, to even the thought that, that God would do that for me? Craziest thing I ever heard. God would love me enough to move on my behalf even though I haven't asked him and in ways that I think he shouldn't, but he did. We limit God and we don't see ourselves from his viewpoint. Remember when the spies came back from Canaan, right? Numbers 13, 33. We saw the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight. That is a powerful scripture, people. Put that back up. Is that up there? Put that back up. We saw the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. You see the limitations they put on themselves? See the limitations there? I saw myself as a grasshopper, and so I was. They weren't seeing themselves through the eyes of God who had sent them. They were seeing themselves through their human eyes, their eyes of limitation. And they limited, they limited what God would do till later. But they limited him. That's why in this church we're constantly trying to expand the knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus. Because there's always more. When we don't know who we are in Christ, limitations. The more we learn who we are in the eyes of God, the more we learn to look at this world as God sees it through His eyes, not the eyes of the 10 o'clock news, not the eyes of, yeah, amen. We start seeing things through the eyes of God. Our lives will begin to change because we'll start seeing stuff that we never believed would take place in our lives because of allowing the presence of God into our lives. It's a large part of our foundation class. I looked this up. I'll share this with you this morning just for reference. I looked up these words in the Bible. In Him. In Him is found 137 times. In him. Through him is found 16 times. By him, there's, it was in there 62 times. 215 verses about, about how we are in him, through him, and by him. You think he's trying to tell us something? You put those together, and it means something, doesn't it? In him, through him, and by him. They identify who we are in Christ Jesus. God wants us to know and see it. That the things he calls us to do, the life that he's called us to live, he's called us to live in him. Well, I'm unable. I know you are. That's why I'll give you the power to live like I'm asking you to live. He doesn't just, just invite us. He prepares us. 
He doesn't only prepare us. He makes a way for us. And the things that he calls you and I to, the serving, the servitude, the things that he calls us to, he empowers us to do it. We look at things and limit ourselves. I can't do that. And the Lord said, why would I ever call you to do something that you can't do? Why would I do that? I wouldn't call you to work for me or, or to go someplace for me or to see something for me, do something for me without preparing you. I wouldn't call you into that without making the way for you. I wouldn't call you into that without, without opening the finances to make it happen. I wouldn't do that. But we see it through the eyes of our own reality and go, that can't happen. That can't happen. And Lord's saying this morning, get out of that stinking box. Rise above your own limitations because I ain't got any. What I call you to will be. How do we limit God? We limit God when we don't remember even his promises to us. Huh? Look again at in Numbers 14, verse 2. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness. Father God made them a promise. He brought them through the Red Sea on dry ground. He he walked with them in the wilderness and provided every step. But they can't see through his eyes the fulfillment of the promise that he made. And so they weakened. We saw ourselves as grasshoppers. This whole thing's off. It can't happen. We can't do this. Sorry, God. Whose limitations? Their own. Certainly not God's. God said they would enter into a land flowing with milk and honey. And God made them that promise. But, but, but they can't see it. And all they're talking about is dying. Better that we died in the wilderness than have to face these giants. Better, than, better back in Egypt than where it is right now. We can't, we can't trust you for this. That happens when we can't even remember that that. I can make it. I can make it through this struggle. I can because I am strengthened by Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When we forget that, don't recognize it, don't take it into our heart, then we can't do all things because we're not receiving the strengthening that God gives us. Yes? Yes, absolutely. How about we forget that I'm an overcomer? My Bible says I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. 1 John 5, 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. How do we handle that? Whew. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory we have that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes? Jesus is the Son of God. I'm saying I believe Jesus is the Son of God. That puts that that puts me in a in a place where I need to expand my mind. That that takes me right out of the normal, right out of the natural into the supernatural, if I truly believe that. What if I forgot that I'm not I'm the head, not the tail? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm the head, not the tail. I forget that stuff. And the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. You shall heed, if you heed the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you today and tell you to carefully observe them. Huh? Is this making sense? I'm telling you, we got limits on ourselves. What if I forget? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Take your best shot. It will not prosper. Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against you 
shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, saith the Lord. Do you believe that this morning? Ooh, there goes your box. Hinges are starting to get loose. I can hear them. I can hear them in the spirit, starting to loosen up. Those are his promises. And, and we stand there sometimes as he's standing on the promises of God, right? Yeah. God, my king, standing on the promises that cannot fail, cannot fail. Though the howling winds of doubt, fear, assail, mm -mm. by the living word of God I shall prevail because I am standing on the promises of God. I can even give reason to them standing and looking into that land flowing with milk and honey and say, well, what's the difference, guys? Here you are. You can either die in Egypt or die here. Go for it. Go for it. Go tell them, face those giants. At least it won't be free. At the very least, we at the very least, what I'm trying to say is we've got to set ourselves free. Jesus gave us freedom and said that we are free indeed. There is a freedom yet for you and I to walk into. There is more with God, our Father. There will always be more with God, our Father. There will never, never be limitations to anything he calls you to. But we forget. We get comfortable. This is interesting. We forget. We get comfortable with what we know when confronted with what we don't know. Think that one. I'm going to tell you that one again. We get comfortable with what we know when confronted with what we don't know. Who explain that one, Pastor? Okay. Glad to. When the pressure's on, we fall back to what we know. true. We fall back on our own life experience and tell ourselves, that can't be. That can't be because my life experience tells me that can't be. When God is saying, open that box. See this situation you're in through my eyes. See how small it is for me, yet so great it is for you. See it through my eyes and see your life change as you begin to walk in areas you've never walked in. Wow. God the Father is expecting us this morning to expand our box to rise in our expectations. Rise up. When Peter was in that tough spot, remember? Denying Christ. What did he do? He went right back to being a filthy mouse fisherman. He just started cussing. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm dead. Pressure's on. I'm done. God's not big enough here. It's exactly what he did. And what about the disciples? Same thing. Same thing. Christ dies on the cross, and they go, uh, I guess we go fishing. Because I can't, I can't see it. We fall back on life's experience. Fishing. I'm going back fishing. Why? Because I can't see anything better coming of this. We're done. Israel's desire to die in the wilderness, turn back, was, was to turn back for what they first knew. Back to Egypt. They knew what to expect. They knew what the parameters were. And they learned how to live within those parameters. Friends, to hell with those parameters. There are none for you and for I in the kingdom of God. Get rid of your own stinking thinking and move on with God. He said, I created you with a future and a purpose and a hope. That alone is a promise. 
So why do I look at that? I have no future. I have no purpose. Why am I here? I have no hope. Nothing for tomorrow. Same old same. Nothing changes. That's a lie. It's right out of the pit of hell. Why give it an ear? We have been trained. You and I have been trained by an enemy of God. We have been trained to think negatively. We have been trained to think limitedly, with limited expectations. We have been trained to think that we will only live, we will only survive under the lowest of circumstances. We even measure each other. Well, God's here. Our brother Rick is here. John is here, and, and I'm down here. I mean, I, I, can, I can hear my Father God saying, where do you come up with such cockamamie stuff? Because nothing's further than from the truth. Oh, Lord. I got boundaries. I got boundaries. Let the boundaries go. Turn them loose. So here's God calling on us this morning to expand, grow, be limitless because I am limit, limitless. And if you're in me, that makes you limitless. Come on in. Come on. Let me go. We are limitless. It's not okay for Jack to be in the box. It's also not okay for God to be in the box. We are one. But that, in fact, is what he was doing, trying to save God. But if you choose, but if you choose to limit God, that's on you. Wow. The question then now is, will we let God do a new thing in our lives? See, will we let God do a new thing in our lives? Another adventure. Thank you. So the answer is yes. Yes. Who of us might be ready to expand our box this morning? Is there anybody in here? Because I think there is. Some of you are just going to be fine in Egypt. You, you know the parameters of the box that you've got. And you're thinking, hey, everything's cool here. Nothing wrong right now. And if anything does go disastrously back, I'll crank him up. But until then, we got her made. You ready to... See, I'm not, I'm not saying that we're going to be able this morning to, to, to completely drop all of the barriers that have been fixed within us. But let's at least, at least, unlock the lid. At least unlock the lid. Maybe take one or two of the hinges off. Just make it a little easier for God to work in our lives by starting to put our hope and our trust and our faith truly in Him. Are you with me this morning? If you're ready to expand that box this morning, if you're ready, I mean, I expect Holy Ghost to blow lids off of boxes if people want that to happen this morning. If you're with me this morning, I want to pray with you because I really see this as important, especially heading in to a new year. And I know everybody goes, well, we've had 75 new years. Well, yeah, but this is a new one. You haven't had this one before. So why shouldn't we step into this year with a, a little higher step, a little more pump in our step, a little more expectations of the things of God working within our lives, a little more ability to turn things over to God and watch Him work on our behalf. Because I think, I think really deep down in our soul, we really want that. 
I, see, I, I really want people ministered to when I pray for them. I really do. I really do. But sometimes, even as I'm praying, I'm sensing the limitation. I'm sensing the limitation. Sometimes we're praying for someone and, and God says, call that stinking thing out of him. And we go, I just pray the will of God over, over you. You know, that's not a bad prayer. It's not a dumb prayer. But we're limiting God in the midst of, that, in the midst of our prayer. And, and so, so learn to pray differently. Learn to pray pregnantly with expectation. As I'm praying, God is hearing. And the prayer that I want to pray is the prayer that God would have me to pray. No cop-outs. No shortcuts. Begin to listen to him and open our lives to him this morning. Amen? We okay with that? Amen. Blow the lid off this stinking thing. Pray with me, Father. Who in the name of Jesus. Teach me not to forget. What an awesome God you truly are. Help me to approach my prayer time knowing, believing, trusting that you still do great miracles. You still create. You still give good and perfect gifts. Father, teach me not to ask for selfish reasons, but to not be afraid to ask the big prayer for your kingdom. For your kingdom, Lord, not my glory, your glory. Remind me, God, that you are bigger than any box I can ever manufacture in my life. And you are more important than anything else this world has to give. Now, in Jesus' name, I fully expect some boxes to be blown open. I'll tell you that this morning. Self-inflicted limitations go to hell in a God kind of way. Why? Because, because we are to be set free. I don't know what this year holds. We don't know what this year holds, but we know who holds the year, yes? He is not going to allow us to be unprepared for that which is to come against us if only we will go to him to see through his eyes day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment. He tells us in his word, I'm not going to do stuff that I'm not going to tell you about. I've sent the prophets. I've sent the teachers. I'm, I'm not hiding. God, God will look at us and say, I am not hiding anything. This is not a, a, an egg hunt. I put it all out there for you. Come join me. Come into my world. Come into my eternal world an everlasting kingdom, I will show you things you could never imagine if you'll come to me. So, Father, I thank you this morning, Lord God. We're going to blow the box off this place in Jesus' name. God, set, set us free. I know, I know your desire to answer the prayer we just prayed, Lord. Whew. Help us, oh God. We can see through your eyes. You have given us Holy Spirit here for leading, for unction, for teaching, for power. It's ours, it's ours to do your will. Only that we will see and know your will. So, Father, even if we decide to let you out of the box, Help us to let ourselves out also so that we can go and do.
thank you, Lord, for the fellowship that you've given us today, Lord, and, and the, uh, the food that's been prepared for us, Father, that the hands be blessed, every hand, that our time together would be blessed, we would be given opportunity to, to minister to one another, that you would just be glorified in the way that we come together to spend our time with you and with one another. We give you thanks for this day and all that is in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great day. Run the race that is set before. Oh, and give somebody some sugar before you get out of here. Amen. Wow. Almost forgot that. Hi.